Now, welcome back, and we're moving to a different topic, and this is all about modifying pair of tapered columns and base plate detailing in tackle structures. So, so if you take a look at the screen here, you can see we have our uh, our pair still line in, in place. So this we had defined and sectioned uh, and defined the, entered the details that will now make uh, placement of a steel column very easy and we'll just get started right away. Now, if you take a look on the screen here and uh, my, on, I mean on my left or, or on my right, and uh, applications and components, you can see, if I scroll up, I'll go straight to PEB member. We'll use the PEB member for placement of the columns and rafters. So I'll, I'll, I'll click on that by left clicking. And the moment I click on that, you'll be able to see at the bottom end here, we have instruction in place because you can see my cursor has changed to a, to a plus sign means it has some instructions. So you can see the instruction here is pick first position. So my first position will be at the bottom end here and I'll go all the way to this splice section that we had defined as a 55, 55,000 uh, millimeters. So I'll click on that. So I'll right click and terminate that command by clicking interrupt. So if we take a look here, you can see we have a straight column, but we need a somehow tapered column here. So I'll double click on this column once again to get to the editor dialog box. So there we'll be able to put in the right information that will taper this particular column to our required uh, shape and size. So let's just give some time to process that information. Once it has been uh, uh, accepted, you, you, you will be able to see we have a pair of dialog box here. So this is where we'll enter the details that will uh, taper this column here. Now, we want at the bottom end here to be a little bit smaller than the top one. So the top one, the top end will be 600 and the bottom end will be approximately 450 right there. And uh, to, the, to enter that, we'll, have, we'll use this image here. Can see we have d0 and we have d1 so a d0 is the bottom end so under d0 i'm going to key in 450 right there so on the d1 here i'm going to key in 600 or, or just the way it is now so i'll go ahead and click apply or click modify so once i've clicked modify that information will be will be will be processed and we'll be able to see a preview of, of a tapered uh, column. So just give some time to process that information and we'll be able to proceed from there by adding another member on top. So you can see that is in place. So we need another member right on top. So I'll come here and close that and come back and click on that. And I want to place another member from top there. Just click on that still line and it will snap on that just mouse over that still line and click then move up and just just place your cursor there and we'll snap on the right position right there so there we are and we want this also to taper uh, uh, following that same profile so you take note from this end taper will not be the same with this taper on top end here. So this one will, will, will prefer it to be 800. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to double click on this column that I've just placed on top of the other that I will then connect, splice them to ease a connection or transportation of the of this component to site for for assembly process, for, for, for assembling purposes. So I've just double clicked on it. So what I'm waiting for is just uh, for the PEB, uh, um, PEB member dialog, dialog box to come up and I'll be able to key in the, the information here. So our D0 is bottom end here. So I'll just leave the 600 here, then I'll key in, 600, uh, key in 800 right there. Then once I've done so, I'm going to just click modify. And prior to that, let's just walk in and uh, get some details here. So if I click on parts, these parts will help me get some get add more details about uh, the web and the flange of these columns. So we can we can go ahead and key in the the details here. Maybe I want the web to be approximately uh, uh, 
about three or millimeter but as it is now let me just leave it at default because uh i don't want to interfere or just to bring more confusion to your end but this where you change the thickness of the web here so if i come here let me just uh, do, do that for, for for an example i can key in here and make it 10 and the, the width, I can just leave the width, or maybe if I want to change the width, I can change the width to a different width. So let me just do it that with 10 so that you see the changes. If I click on that and give it some time, you can see, you will see the flame change thickness here automatically. So let's just give it some time to process that information. And when it's done, we'll be able to have a look at that or we'll have a preview of that. So the web has changed the thickness of a 10 millimeter so you can see that so what i can do i can just make it empty like that so that we, we retain our default settings let me just double click on it so that it links up with our, with our dialog box and i'll go ahead up and click uh, apply and give it an okay write that like that so if i zoom out and come to the bottom end here you'll be able to see we are well connected or well connected with the bottom end column so what I'm going to do here is very imp is very simple. Is now to place the base plate. So the base plate here, I'll just come here and scroll under the PEB tools available here. I'm going to pick on PEB base plate right there. So once I've just invoked or activated that command by left clicking on it, you can see uh, my cursor changes to a plus sign. And if I come to, you can see the instruction here, select the PEP member. So this is the PEP member I'm going to select on and I'll select on it by left clicking on it. So I'll give it some time to enter that information and then snap on the, uh, I'll pick the point where I want to insert the base plate. So I'll pick the bottom end there. So once I've done so, I'll just right click and wait for the, the base plate to appear on the bottom end there. Then from there, I'll be able to add more details on the, on the same same plate. So let's just give some time to respond to that instruction that we have just injected right there. So if I zoom out, you'll be able to see I have the base plate in place. I'll come to navigate and I want to rotate this with mouse by selecting rotate with mouse, then I'll press my left button in the mouse and I'll be able to move my mouse. That will enable rotating easily like that. So we have this is a default setting of the base plate. So I'm going to double click on it once again so that I edit or add more details or customize this to my liking or to my preferred uh, uh, shape and uh, dimension. So if you take a look on the picture here, you can see we have some options on how you want your base plate to, to, to link up or to be welded together with the column. You can pick the two choices available here and also we have some offset between the edge of the edge of the plate to the edge of the clock column you can key in the distances of your preference there so as it is now just retain it at, yet at that at default but if i just like i can just key in 10 millimeter and if i come here and try and click modify you'll be able to see it will respond to that information just give some time it will respond to that information once i've clicked modify so that's how you 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 modify uh the projection between of of between the plate and the column so you can see the response here so i can just uh, get rid of that so that will just work with the default settings there so I hope that you, you've understood well. So let me just click apply and uh, modify. So from here, I, I'm going to key in the right dimensions of center to center of the bolts and also add some details about the stiffeners here. So I'll come to bolts here. So uh, bolts tab, and I want to pick on the diameter of the bolt of my pref of my prefer of, of my preferred bolt size. I'll pick on M20 and the bolt standard. I'll click on that drop down arrow. And we have all the standards available here. And uh, as always, I always use uh, UK or uh, British uh, British standards or BS standards. So I'll pick 8.4 XOX right there. So on the on the bolt side, I can I can add some uh, some washers there. And what I'm going to do here is now to define. The, the 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 dimensions of the bolts position by keying keying in the right dimensions here so luckily i have some my presets 
I'll, I'll click on that and load so that we have the settings here. So I'll key in that and uh, change this to zero and work with one dime, one side so that uh, I'll define from this center to that center, I have that dimension in place and I'll have that offset from the edge of from the edge of that uh, column to to the to the outer bolt and key in that dimension so that's what all, all i have and if i click load right there so you can see the settings that i had used so you can try that and apply that on your project so i'll go ahead and click modify if i click modify i'll be able to have uh, the bolts in place but this this has also brought to us uh, the stiffeners. So I'll just go to stiffeners and try to modify or manipulate them so that you see how they respond. They respond. I'll come to stiffeners tab here. So this way we, I want to show you how we can manipulate the stiffeners here. So under stiffeners, we have we have web stiffeners. So under web stiffeners, we have the, the other. These are the web stiffeners. So. In here, we have drop down arrows here where you can select on type of stiffeners you would like to use. So I can select that and, and change that. And if I come to outer flange, I can also pick on that and change to a different one. And I can go ahead and click on that. So that's how you change. So you have options on how you can modify all that. So I can just go back to my initial setting. So I can pick on that as it was initially and pick on this. As it was initially, let me just drag it aside because I have uh, some recording component here that try, tries to block me and I would not like that to happen. So I'll come here and uh, click on that and we'll have that in place. So if I pick on that, we'll have that in place. So I'll go ahead and click modify and that will, will take me back where I was. So we have some chamfers here. You can EK in your chamfers and type that maybe any 20, you don't need 80. Just key in that and come here and key in 20 and come here and key in 20 and click modify. If I click modify, I'll be able to have that in place. And also the height of the stiffeners, I can increase that maybe to 250 if I need and go ahead and click apply and you'll be able to see it responds. So let me just retain them at my previous, uh, to my previous uh, settings and bring this to 80. And bring this to 80. This is very simple to, to, to follow these simple instructions. So I'll come here and key in 80 and come here and key in 80 to take me back to my initial settings. So we have that in place. So the thickness of the stiffeners also can be modified, modified from here. So I can try to change that to 20 and click that. You can see it has changed to 20 millimeter thickness. And if I come to web or stiffeners, I can come here and change that to 20 as well and click uh, apply or modify. So you can also come here and change the material of that particular plate and click on that uh, radio button there and come to steel, material steel and uh, I will always use the, the C, to C, I mean S to that five that and click OK. So we'll have that in place. So maybe you want to change the color instead of this black gray or, or gray, you can change that maybe to a different color code and key in that number there. So that will change the color code. So that will happen the same to outer flange stiffener and key in a color of your or a color code of your choice. And if you do that, that will happen. So for, for now, just let's just come here and just uh, use our initial color and click apply. So the stiffness position also is very tricky because you can see some test settings here. I've, I've created some settings here. So if I remove uh, this setting here and click modify, we'll have some, some weird arrangement of stiffness here that might really bring you to a total confusion. And this is not what, to, what I expect from you. So the reason why I entered one and three is uh, the number of of the stiffeners. I have one, two, three. So um, I don't need this stiffener and I don't need this stiffener. So what I'll come here, I'll come under delete bolt pitch center. I'll come here and I'll count one, two, three stiffeners. So I'll key in number, uh, number one and space that. That is number one stiffeners that will start from here. 
So if you want to know the direction where it starts, just key one there and see where which one disappears first. So that point will will you will define as your first point, your first stiffener. So let me just go ahead and click apply, and you see that disappeared disappears and come here and space that and key uh, key in sp uh, stiffener number three. We want to get rid of it because we don't need it on that position. So I'll go ahead and click modify. So you see that disappearing. Uh, so that will happen to the opposite direction here. You can see we have only two. So maybe you can you noted that uh, the uh, the uh, thickness of the stiffeners is, is way too big. We can just leave it as it is, or we can take it back to uh, 10 millimeter thickness. So let me just key in 10 millimeter thickness here and key in that. And click here apply and give it an okay so we are back where we, we were and that's how you set your your stiffeners so we also have some special stiffeners which are not necessary for now because we have these in place so we can just uh, wait for that grout holes we don't we don't need any grout holes but if you need just click key in there and click okay and if you click or modify we, we will have the, the grout holes in place in place but we don't need that so just retain this as no and click uh, modify so if you click modify we are good to go and we have that in place well defined so if i come here and close that and come to navigate and rotate with mouse by left clicking and pick the our rotation point and again you can press ctrl r and pick your rotation point and hold your left button on the mouse and move your mouse like that and you'll be able to rotate that so if i zoom out I'll have these in place. So that's all about uh, modifying PEP, tapered column, and base plate uh, detailing tackle structures. So I hope you can try that and manage manage it conveniently or without any uh, any problem. And I'll be glad to know whether you've managed to do that by yourself. So we'll move to a different topic and let's meet then.